Ever since the arrival of Eric Ten Hag, Julian Timber has always been our number one defensive target. But with recent reports suggesting the deal could be dead in the waters, it looks like Manchester United might have moved on to his centre back partner, Lissandro Martinez. But how much could the Argentine potentially cost us? And what role could he potentially have under Eric Ten Hag? Also, with there being less than one week left till the start of our pre season tour, are we set to send in a second bid for Frankie de Jong? Well, let's discuss all this in the latest episode of Transfers FC. But before we get into that Manchester United news, I want to say a massive thank you for 1000 subscribers. As your man's support on the recent videos has been absolutely insane man. And if you can't tell already, your boy's voice is a bit done out. But we will power through and with that being said, let's move on to that Manchester United news and starting off with Lissandro Martinez's transfer. As according to the highly reliable Mike Verve, Manchester United are preparing an offer for Lissandro Martinez. As after not being able to sign Jurian Timber, Manchester United have switched their attention to Lissandro Martinez, who Eric Ten Hag knows for three years. Meanwhile, Arsenal could return with another offer for the player. So, according to the highly reliable Ajax journalist Mike Verve, Manchester United are looking at Lissandro Martinez and it's Manchester United versus Arsenal for Lissandro Martinez. And that's the case as David Ornstein on the weekend dropped this news that Arsenal's defensive priority this window is Lissandro Martinez. Wanted for his ability to play left centre-back and left-back, the 24-year-old Argentine international is said to be in keen. And that sources indicate that a 30 million euro bid has already been rejected by Ajax, but Arsenal will keep pushing. So, it looks like Arsenal might be ahead of us in the race for Lissandro Martinez, as they have already sent in a 30 million euro bid. But, this news might not be the case. As according to Mike Verve, Arsenal never placed in an offer for Lissandro Martinez. They did report themselves at the club to ask whether the player is up for sale and that they are willing to pay 30 million euros, but an official bid never went in. Ajax did not want to talk about his sale. So it looks like there might be conflicting reports here. As for David Ornstein, well, he is an absolute go-to when it comes to the Arsenal news, and he's up there uh, and he's up there with the Fabrizio Romanos when it comes to Tier 1 news. But for Mike Verve, well the same goes for him as well. As when it comes for Ajax and Dutch players news, well he's up there as well he's up there with the Fabrizio Romanos and David Ornstein. And I think it might be the case that I Arsenal never put in an official bid. As they might have leaked it to David Ornstein to suggest that they are willing to put in a 30 million euro bid. But the fact that Ajax would never accept a fee that low. And that's why Arsenal truly never put in an official bid. And if Arsenal have not put in an official bid yet. And Manchester United have not put in their official bid yet. Well it looks like we might be neck and neck in the race for Lissandro Martinez. As for Arsenal and Manchester United. Well we are in similar situations for next season. As we will both be in the Europa League after Arsenal finish 5th and Manchester United finish 6th. And the fact of the matter is. For both teams realistically it's hard to say where he would actually play. As for Arsenal they do already have an established centre back partnership. With Gabriel and Ben White. And with the likes of Saliba coming back on loan. Well, it looks like Martinez might have to fill in at left back or be a cover to someone like Gabriel. And at Manchester United, the same could be said there. As we do have three very good centre backs with the likes of Harry Maguire, Rafa Varane and Victor Lindelof. But with us not having an established centre back partnership out of the three, well, Lissandro Martinez could establish a centre back partnership with someone like Harry Maguire or Rafa Varane. And with the fact that they say that he can also play a left back and defensive midfield. Well there's no wonder why Eric Ten Hag wants him. And if there's a reason why he would choose Manchester United over Arsenal. Well it would be Eric Ten Hag. As Lissandro Martinez has worked under Eric Ten Hag for the past three years. And well he's really established himself as an elite ball playing centre back under the Dutchman. And the fact that he has worked under him and he hasn't worked under someone like Mikel Arteta. Well he already knows that he has an established bond with Eric Ten Hag. And the fact of the matter is, Eric Ten Hag will not be signing someone like Lissandro Martinez if he was not planning to have him in his team. And maybe just maybe, Lissandro Martinez could be our short term defensive midfield solution. As I told you that Lissandro Martinez can play left back and defensive midfield. 
and with him having played 20 odd games at defensive midfield under Eric Ten Hag. Maybe in the short term, if Manchester United are not planning to sign a defensive midfielder like someone like Ibrahim Sangare, well, Lissandra Martinez could fill in in that position. And if you're thinking, how can Lissandra Martinez play that when he's a centre-back? Well, Lissandra Martinez is one of the best technicians as a centre-back in all of football. And I don't think that's an understatement, as with the comfortability he has on the ball and his ball-playing ability, well, that is the reason why Eric Ten Hag started him off as a defensive midfielder. And if we look at his numbers in his first season when he did play a defensive midfield, well, if we compare him to the likes of the Centurion Fernandinho, well, it looks like he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe in many aspects for a defensive midfielder. Would the stats suggesting that Martinez is a much better dribbler, but is slightly worse when it comes to deep progression and interceptions. But a reason why these interceptions and deep progression might be a bit lower, because he only played half that season as defensive midfield. As if we look at his numbers in that season, well, he played 22 games as defensive midfield and 19 as centre-back. And that's why his numbers might be a bit less than someone like Fernandinho. But the fact of the matter is, that was a prime Fernandinho. And this was a 21 Lissandro Martinez. And three years on with him establishing himself as one of the elite ball-playing centre-backs in all of Europe. And I think anything under 50 million euros for Lissandro Martinez would be a good deal for Manchester United. But what are your thoughts on this Lissandro Martinez news? How much do you think he could potentially cost us? And if we were to sign him, where do you think his best role could be in next season's Eric Ten Hag Manchester United? But anyways, with that being said, now let's move on to that Julian Timber news. As I told you in the intro, it looks like Timber to Manchester United is completely off. And that is coming from sources like Mike Verve again. As according to him, Jurin Timber's decision tends more and more on staying. He will now go on holiday where he will think more about his future. But the chances of him staying in Amsterdam are now pretty big. And according to Van der Kran, the Timber to Manchester United deal is dead in the waters. Since last night, the agents of the player are now in contact with Ajax who are now ready to offer him a new deal. And... This is a massive surprise to me, as just two weeks ago, it looks like Timber to Manchester United was a formality, with his agency travelling to London and discussing terms with Manchester United. But after the season ended and Timber went to international duties, well, it looks like his national team manager and a former Manchester United manager, Louis van Gaal, has said something to him. As Louis van Gaal was suggesting that if Timber signed for Manchester United, well, his chances of playing regular first-team football at Manchester United would be slim. And if that was the case, as I told you, Louis van Gaal would have not picked Timber to the World Cup. And I think that is a bit disgraceful from Louis van Gaal, as we are seeing him constantly pick the likes of Nathan Ake, who rarely ever plays for Manchester City. But now with the fact that we're trying to sign Julian Timber, well, it looks like he's trying to be spiteful for Manchester United. As also, it wasn't too long ago where he was saying that Eric Ten Hag should not go to Manchester United. And I know Louis van Gaal, you didn't have the best of times at Manchester United. But despite fullness to the club and despite fullness to the fans, well, for me, this is disgraceful. As all us Manchester United fans absolutely loved and adored your time at Manchester United. But the fact that you're trying to block any Dutch players and even managers coming to Manchester United. Well, as I said, that is absolutely disgraceful from you, Lou Van Gaal. But with that being said, there is nothing Manchester United can now do, as it looks like Jurian Timber is set to get a new deal. And for the short term, I think this might be the end of Jurian Timber's talks to Manchester United. But continuing on with the Dutch players, and let's talk about the latest news on the Frankie de Jong saga. As with there being less than one week left to the start of our pre-season tour, well, Manchester United are yet to make any signings. But it looks like Manchester United might be moving this current week. As according to Mr. Erwi Go himself, Fabrizio Romano, Manchester United are discussing internally about submitting a new proposal for Frankie de Jong in the coming days. It's a serious possibility while talks with Barcelona are still on as the deal will now enter key stages after our 60 million euro verbal opening bid got turned down. So according to the most reliable journalist out there, Fabrizio Romano, Manchester United are set to send in a second bid this week. 
And for me, this second bid must put us in touching distance to complete this Frankie de Jong transfer. And it looks like that might be the case. As according to a Barcelona journalist, Ferran Martinez, Manchester United will raise their offer for Frankie de Jong to 75 million euros plus add-ons. And that is a close amount to Barcelona's asking price of 80 million euros. And as I told you, this bid right here should absolutely seal the deal for the Frankie de Jong saga. As we cannot waste any more precious time on this Frankie de Jong saga. As if we are not willing to match the asking price of what Barcelona want. Especially when we have people like Richard Arnold suggesting that money isn't the problem. As he was quoted saying on the Frankie de Jong saga, money is not under consideration for who we want. It's down to who the manager wants himself and they've done the work to look if he's a great player. And with him also going on to say that he is doing everything he can to get Frankie de Jong and that he's telling him that the money is there. And with him also saying that our director of football, John Murto, is working from 6am to 10pm to try to get the Frankie de Jong deal done. And that there is 200 million available for transfers and that they will not let any other transfer target slip. Well, if that is the case and Manchester United do have 200 million to spend. Well, if we waste any more time trying to penny pinch and trying to get a Frankie de Jong on the cheap. Well, just like previous transfers before with the likes of Erling Haaland and Jude Bellingham. And with transfers even in this year with the likes of Darwin Nunes. Manchester United could potentially miss out on another player again if we waste any more time on this transfer. As it looks like Barcelona are willing to sell Frankie de Jong. And with the fact that it looks like we might just be 5 million euros short of what Barcelona want. Well, if we do truly have £200 million to spend, well, at the end of the day, €5 million Euros should not even be something that we are thinking about if we are trying to get Frankie de Jong at Manchester United. But anyways, lads, what are your thoughts on this Frankie de Jong saga? Do you think this deal could potentially get concluded this week? And if so, how much do you think he could potentially cost Manchester United? But anyway. But anyways lads that was the latest episode of Transfers FC and if you did enjoy the video well go down there and smash that like button for your boy and consider subscribing to my channel as we are now on the road to 1500 subscribers. But anyways lads I wish your boy a speedy recovery from this dreaded dreaded throat injury. <coughs> but in all seriousness that was the video there and there and for now guys i'm out peace